garden hose, you're going to have the faucet about a third, uh, you know, 30 to 40 percent open to cover your basic daily needs. But then you have to have enough capacity in there so they can turn that hose all the way up where the need is there. Very, at that point, it's, the electric companies have to be very responsive, and if they can, remember, electricity travels at the speed of light. If I if my cost of in Wisconsin of generating power to deal with that peak load is is poor, if I can't respond to that quickly, as many of the eastern and southern states are, uh, can't, then if that electricity is generated in a grid, it can be moved in mass, volume by volume, and the price of electricity during its peak load can be four, five, or even ten times as much as the cost of electricity under normal use. So if we have a no, I mean, it makes perfect sense. I really, I'm not criticizing um, the utility companies for coming up, you know, with this proposal. Because if you can generate, if you can have a super grid of lines, in effect, that is placed on top of it for regional transfer, right? And the mark, then that's why it makes sense. My question is, well, my concern at this point is, we, as public, we as citizens need to know what the larger plan is for this. And is this is a part of a regional plan. They say in the literature that it will improve the liability on a local and regional level. And I asked them today in the meeting, as I'm sure some of you did, what do you mean by a regional? What are we saying? And they go, well, you know, it's all connected together. It's all kind of whatever. And we're saying, yeah, you're right. It's connected together, so let's see where the connections are. Let's see what the demand is. If we're going to be improving your liability, to use the garden hose analogy, if we can water our state with <coughs> electricity and use a 5 8 inch hose, we went, we're going to be paying for the cost, and we know that's 10% right now. We have spent over a billion dollars in transmission in the state of Wisconsin from 2008 to 2010, uh, 2002 to 2008. A billion, a little over a billion dollars. And as a result, we have the PSC will say in their own report, the highest residential electric rates in this in the Midwest, largely because of due in, I do in large part to the expense of the transmission lines that are already on our bill. Okay, so if we're going to be building more lines, we're going to be adding to that. And the curious thing about why they're expensive, they say 425 million, or let's call it 600 million, to include the capex 2020 in there. That's a lot of money. Granted. The problem is, is that I mentioned it earlier, what about the finance part of that side? Now, electric companies don't have a lot of equity right now. Why? Because their product is moving at a, they're not growing at a fast rate. So getting a loan for $500, whatever, $600 million shouldn't be that hard for an electric company, but eh, maybe there's some other ways we can do it. So what they do is they get a proposal for this project, they get it accepted by the Public Service Commission, it's granted as meeting sub public's uh, you know, need, Right? And then all of a sudden, they have a project that, who, where is the equity in the project? How when was the last time you didn't pay your electric bill? Okay, because it's a 10% roughly price that's added onto your, onto your bill. So we, now, here's the trick. 10% doesn't sound like a lot, of, a lot but like a mortgage, uh, it's not just one month, it's not just a year. It's 20 to 40 years of the duration on the mortgages. So that if you were to take the figure that they that ATC provided us at the town meeting in March of 10 percent, the average electric bill for the average the average electric bill in Wisconsin in 2009 was $200 per customer. Uh, excuse me, with 10 percent of their bill came out to $200 per customer. So at the average electric customer in 2009. 10% of the bill that they paid was $200, $211, okay? So, now, the trick is, 20 years, 40 years, how long is the amortization right now? So that means 30 years later, we would end up paying $6,000 for the transmission lines that had been built between 2010 and 2008. All right, looking forward, right? And that comes to the what? Only ATC customers? And we will pay, that's a very that's a, a, a very good question, That we, another angle that we need to pursue. Because, because we actually need to be having this dialogue about these expenses with 2020 with dairy land and stuff, because we are not in the same service area. The, rule, the basic principles are established by the federal government. 
2000 act, you know, 2000 energy bill, and 2005 transmission rate structures, and so forth. So it would be very comparable, but there is a little technical thing in there, yes. Because our, actually, our land, our Verde County, part of Morrell County, are not in ATC service areas, so the charges would go on the CapEx 20, 20 line and not the Badger Cooling line. But the, the, the number of 7 to 10 percent is pretty much standard. That's where we stand. So any, and yes, that it can be shared. There's a lot of, that's a bunch of questions there. What is Excel? For the first time ever, I've heard their name mentioned in connection with this. Well, there are, those are 